Right, we should be recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Manchester is Blue Transfer podcast. It's a new series, the first episode of a new series where we're going to get together and discuss everything to do with anything transfer talk regarding City. Got an all-star cast today. I've got Cloud. How are you doing? Doing good, mate. Doing good. Good. Got Halifax already getting topped up there. How are you All doing? Right. <laughs> All right, the Man City world. <laughs> and we've got the uh, non... Well, not exactly quiet bloke in <laughs> Laney. How are you doing, Laney? Evening. I feel like shit. <laughs> You're <laughs> lost I'm here anyway. Great start, great start. <laughs> yeah, Blues, this is uh, episode one of the Transfer Podcast. It's a uh, short and minimal episodes that we're going to keep to. Uh, and we're going to have different topics for each discussion, so the lads are going to get involved with me today. So, episode one is quite simply, where the hell do we strengthen in the summer? Obviously, we know that Sergio's leaving. Uh, as of that, we don't know who else is leaving or who's to come in. So, I want to basically get positions from each and one of you. Just say one position, explain the reason why. So... We'll start off with Cloud. What, where, where's the main thing for you that we need to improve on? I'm going to avoid the obvious answer. I'm going to say defensive midfield. Uh, Ferdinand is going to be 36 in a couple of weeks. Um, I don't think he's extended for another year as of yet. So I think we need someone in there um, alongside Rodri to take over that mantle from Ferna. Real stuff. It, it may be future captain material or just somebody just to fill in. Oh, oh, future captain, I'm thinking Ruben Diaz. I can't see anyone else taking that in the future. But um, I, I want to put that pressure on them, get the position sorted first and then have a look at the characters in the dressing room and take that in a few years' time when that's an issue. Brutal stuff. Any names that pop out to you or would you prefer going for the, I think, on a lot of Benica. fans? Is, Benica uh... from Milan. Oh, yeah. right. That's a name I'm not... Out. Would uh, Douglas Louise not tickle the uh, feathers there? Douglas Louise is another good one. Yeah, I just think technically, I, I don't think he fits what Pep looks for in a player, which is like, very technically able. I think, you know, Benek is more that sort of style. Um, yeah. Douglas Louise would be good. I just don't know if he's going to be seen as a, a long term sort of solution. Well, no, no. I like, like that, like the idea. You know, many people don't really think of defensive mid, especially we've got Rodri. He's, mm. uh, I think he's only 23, 24, so he's, yeah, yeah. he's got bags of time in him. So, no, that's a good, good one to start off with. Halifax, what are you saying, pal? <laughs> well, not to just uh, piss on Klaus chips, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I'd think more of a central midfielder in the Gundogan role. Um, just being that I reckon Gundogan's going to step back. I reckon he's going to go in defensive midfield with Rod, like cover for Rodri. And um, I, I'd like us to sign, like, uh, is it a Roar? Is it Ore or yeah, someone yeah. From, 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 from Leon? I think he's sort of like that player, like a bit attacking minded, quick on the ball. I think, I think, I'm not saying we desperately need that role, but I would like us to get another central midfielder in that mould because we've sort of got, and like Cloud touched on then, like, an aging defensive midfielder in Fernandinho. KDB's 30, wrong side of 30, even though we hate to admit it. Um, Gundogan's wrong side of 30. So I think maybe a bit of fresh blood in that central midfield would help next season. Well, how are your, uh, your primary choice then? Is that, is that the kind of player no, you want? Or is yeah, I, I like him. Uh, I like, uh, oh, I can't think of his name now, that Frank. Um, what's it from AC Milan Frank Commission or something I can't remember his name I, I quite like him he's like gets in the centre back a bit decent on ball I thought um, but yeah I, I think that's the player I'd be going for to be honest and and, and people are probably thinking we're packed out in centre midfielders but all we need to do is evolve in it we need these squads to carry on evolving like we've been doing and sometimes you buy a player that you don't think you need straight away and that's what I'm thinking Real stuff, real stuff. Lane, <laughs> um, I didn't get the memo, to be quite honest, about the uh, the one position. So I've got four down. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like six well, me, it is, uh... one other than the ones that have been mentioned. Well, no, I mean, the central defensive mid was already mentioned, although I'm, I, I actually thought Tonali from AC Milan Knox, the mm. other guy. Um, obviously, everyone knows we need a striker. Everyone knows... Most people want Haaland, that's no biggie. The only two, I mean, there's left-back, I think, need sorting out. 
Zinchenko for me is by far our number one right player, number one left back. Mendy's crap um, and inconsistent. Cancelo isn't a left back. So, I, I mean, the problem is, I don't really think there's many world class left backs at the minute that we could even look at buying. You know, you could say Rob. What about him from um, I don't know his name. The one I went for was Grimaldo. Grimaldo is the name that comes to my mind every time. But the, the other, obviously, you know what I'm like for uh, <laughs> being a, close to the line. Who I was also play thinking for? about. Is it? Who's I got? think he. Is it? Um, oh, God, he's playing red. Sorry. Yeah, he's playing red. Grimaldo. Yeah, Benfica. Uh, Benfica. I couldn't think of the name. I've, I've been off. So you've got Ruben Diaz and you've so got Mendy to give us a good name there. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So there was the link there, but I was also thinking, you know, about centre back. I've, right. I've been massively impressed with Aki. He spent most of the season out. Um, I know in episode two we're going to look at other things, and I'll bring stuff about Laporte up then. But I mean, the, the one I'd think if we were having to get a, left, a centre back would be uh, Nicholas Stark. I've uh, I've still, mentioned him numerous times. I still like that guy. I think he could play in central defensive mid as well. Um, I know what Halifax was saying about the central midfield position, but I think with Foden and you've got Tommy Doyle coming through as well, there is another player I would throw in there, but I'm I've, I've saving him for my last, my right. last call. So, so you just want to go back to your centre back position area. We have got, you know, okay, yes, he has been out injured for a while, but you've got, I'd say we've got four. an informed John Stones, Laporte, and Ruben Diaz. Okay, filling in the place. We really need one. You've got Stones and Diaz, Laporte. Well, Aki, Aki spent most of the season injured, and I was never massively impressed with the idea of spending forty million on a re- relegated centre back. Anyway, you know, you spent all that money, and then all of a sudden he's hardly anywhere to be seen. Bless him. You've got Emmerich Laporte, who again at the start of the season we were all saying was who's going to partner him. He's just been dropped like a sack of shit for Diaz and Stones. He's all right. I, I questioned his, his injury record from last season. And I think because of he's not been playing much this season, he's not really put that to the test, whether he's he's capable of, you know, doing all the running, playing plenty of games. He's done all right. I do like him. I, I personally wouldn't get rid of him. But I'm also trying to think the bigger... But, you know, I, I know the question you were looking at was who's run their time at City or who wants to leave for game time. There's a lot of I'll very, very good... Next, next episode that we discuss, yeah. Which, just... which, that's what I'll bring up on, on that point. Right, right. But what, what are your thoughts on that, Cloud? Because I know Laney likes to throw a spanner in the worst to try and be as controversial. I, 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 me, personally, I would disagree that centre-back is a position where we need to strengthen personally in the summer. I think I think we're, we're, we're sorted. You know, we've got Howard Bellis out on loan as well. Mm. In my uh, defence, it was last on my list. It was the last one. It was, it was just the... Ah, but you kept quiet about it. You kept quiet about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the centre-back position, Cloud? So, I think with another centre-back instead of Aki, there's a few ways to look at it. I think the first one, is we don't need another centre-back, we just might want one because it can be strengthened. Um, but I look at, like you said, Taylor Harwood Bellis. I look at how he went out on loan. He's gone out on loan to a local club. You know, he could probably drive there to train and still come back home to Manchester. He's still got the facilities and the people to stay around with. He's in touch and he's in that distance. We can bring him back in if Aki doesn't work out. What we paid for Aki, the fee, is done and sorted. We're not going to recoup anything close to that for him. And anyone else who comes in isn't going to play consistently enough. Uh, as for Laporte, I think Laporte is our best centre-back on the left side. Um, and, I mean, against Crystal Palace, you know, I know he has had some form issues here and there, but Crystal Palace, the way that he plays on the ball, is, his passing range is ridiculous. He's a pep player through and through. And although he has made some mistakes, I think they get largely exaggerated over the stuff that he does provide. And uh, uh, I look at, you know, for example, in the Carabao Cup final with what he did to Tottenham, you want a player who can put in those moments like Laporte. And I think he's brilliant. I really do. He was quite confident on the ball yesterday, like you said. I think it was in uh, halfway through the second half. He was pegged back in the penalty box, wasn't he? And he just calm as you like, just passed it out to the right hand side. Yes, it went out for a throw into Palace in the end, but it, mm. it, 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 there was just a nice aura of calmness about him, wasn't he's there? He's fantastic and, uh, on the ball. He really is. He's incredible. Did, he has did, had some injuries, but before that, he's been absolutely fine. Got going on a sidestep from where we need to strengthen, but I want to keep on, keep on that topic. Who are your 
centre back partnerships next year? Is it Stones Diaz? Is it Laporte Diaz? Or is it you know Laporte and Stones? Laporte Not Diaz. Who's sorry? Laporte and Diaz. Laporte and Diaz. Halifax. Um, I'm sort of gonna agree, but I can't see. The thing is, we don't know what John Stones is going to come back. Oh, sorry about that. We don't know what John Stones is going to come back. <clears throat> is John Stones going to be the player that... Is this the player he is and we've just never seen it because of injuries and sort of filling companies' boots? And do you get what I mean? Or is this is this him now? Do you know what I mean? Is he in the vein of his life or is he going to be the player that we all thought he could be? So it depends how he comes back. But, I mean... I don't think what Laney said about and who said about is actually the worst idea in the world because, right, Ruben Diaz is only 23. He's never had a major injury, but that could change. Ake, injury prone. Laporte, injury prone. John Stones, injury prone. We could be looking at next season a, a, a point where we've got Ruben Diaz as a fixed centre back and fucking Fernandinho's in Zimmer frame tracking R- Ronaldo or something for Man United. Do you get what I mean? So. <laughs> I do think maybe it's probably not the worst case scenario. It's probably uh, a senior centre back, maybe. But yeah. just to fill in the lead. Who's the odd pairing then, Lane? See, for me, it's not as simple as just saying who's your pairing. It's got to be who goes with your wing backs. Yeah. So to me, if, if Walker's playing on the right, the man you have holding his hand is John Stones. Both English, both on the same page. They can communicate easier. <laughs> same as if Cancelo's then playing right back. You have Diaz stood next to him, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with what Claude's saying. You know, L- Laporte is by far our best left-sided centre-back. I'd quite happily have Laporte and Diaz with Cancelo on one side and Zinchenko on the other. Or, you know, if, if, if I got my wish and got Grimaldo in, you'd have Grimaldo, um, Laporte, Diaz, and blah, blah, blah. But, again, I, I like the idea of... Um, if it, if it was up to me, I would have Howard Bellis in the mix in there. You know, I like the youth. I don't think Pep is ever going to really use him until he's at least, you know, started shaving. Because <laughs> Pep doesn't seem to do that, you know. it's. No. But, um, but yeah, it, it, if it had to be, you have to pick two every week. It's got to be Laporte and Diaz. Got to be. Right. So, well, a lot of, uh, pretty much unanimous there, isn't it, really? Diaz and Laporte being the main two and Stone, Stone still on in. But, of course, we know what Pep's like. He's... Uh, He's rotate-minded, and uh, I know some of us disagree with some of the selections he does, but comes with Pep, you can never predict a lineup. So I, think, I suppose that's a good thing, considering where we are in the league. But uh, as for the first episode, boys, of where we need to strengthen, that'll be all. Um, thank you for anyone who's listening, and uh, thanks for joining us, boys. Hope everyone takes care, and uh, see you in episode two.